Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I will uh, demonstrate how to configure certain things before um, you can start using Net Zero Cloud. Um, the, the thing is that you need to look for a few things and I explain to you what each thing means. The first thing, right, pretty, which is pretty basic, uh, you need to look for a certain permission set license, okay? So what do you do? Um, say you go to this uh, Gecko icon, and you go to setup and uh and we go to company uh, sorry company information <coughs> excuse me under company information just look for permission set license and just to see if you got a permission set license assigned for net zero cloud so i'll go to list um so i do have net zero cloud and i do have net zero cloud basic so those are the two uh the licenses uh you can look for um <clears throat> so that's because without that right what will happen is that you'll not be able to access it. Now, you must be wondering, what is so special about the Net Zero uh, Cloud Permissions and License? So using the Net Zero Cloud Permissions License, <clears throat> you can access uh, Net Zero Cloud features and, which, and the standard Net Zero Cloud objects. Uh, if you don't enable this, you won't be able to access it, okay? And then you might have seen that Net Zero, you know, uh, this one, the Analytics Base 5 app, and you must be wondering what the heck that is, right? So this is normally, you know, like I said, that mine is a trial org, right? This is a 30-day uh, a trial. So it comes with it. So usually uh, this specific license, right? It, it's available with uh, Net Zero Cloud Growth License. So it gives access to your Net Zero um analytics apps but there are limitations to it right so we'll talk about that later so uh for, for if you're if you're uh registering for a free trial org you might see this two license right so but it's just good to know the uh the importance of this too okay so that's that's cool now what i'll do i will enable certain feature right we need to enable net zero cloud because right now it's not enabled uh, in this uh, trial org it is it will be enabled by default but um if you are you know uh, not using a trial org if you wanted to move to net zero cloud then you need to activate certain things okay so that's exactly what i'm going to demonstrate so as usual you're on the setup page right just uh, insert a company uh the type net zero these are the housekeeping stops right <clears throat> excuse me Okay, so as you can see, the net zero uh, is turned off. It's most likely the case for you unless you are uh, using a trial org. So for trial org, everything will be activated. But just wanted to make sure that I explain to you guys what each stuff means, right? So uh, it's easy for me to um, explain. Okay, so I am going to enable this. So when I enable this, right, what happens is that um, uh, it will turn on your Net Zero Cloud. Now, you must be wondering, okay, that's great. Now, what about these guys, right, manage carbon accounting? Um, so if you so if you wanted to calculate, like as the name says, right, if you wanted to calculate carbon emission related to energy use data, you need to activate this, okay? Um, so... Now, okay, that's great. Now, what about the manage building int energy intensity? What is this is about? So you can, if you remember that I talked about there are predefined data sets that comes with Net Zero Cloud. There, you can also load a uh, data set and calculate various in intensity of your building uh, using um, regional building energy intensity data. So that's the purpose of this manage building energy intensity. So you need to activate this to do that. Okay, now there are a lot of options here. And there's one thing I wanted to talk about that is the, the carbon emission forecast. So the carbon emission forecast is turned off by default. 
So uh, if you turn it on, what that will do is that it will forecast um, emission for future years based on advanced account forecasting, okay, which is available with uh, Net Zero uh, Glo Cloud Growth License. So you can do that. Then there is something called Manage Emission Target, which is right above, uh, which is uh, it will set the company level targets for emission based on the emission activity and by the year. So as usual, it's available with Net Zero Growth Cloud license, right? Okay, so I'll activate this one. And then you have different ones, right? And there is a data gap one, <clears throat> which is um, this one, right? Which um, the main purpose is it will uh, identify energy related data gaps and fill them based on system proposed value. So I prefer to turn this on as well, right? Then you, if you wanted to do, you know, supply or sustainability data, or if you wanted to do the waste related data, right? If you wanted to track the waste related data and calculate, you know, related emissions and footprint, you can use the base. You can turn this on. Okay. So there are different options here. Now, there's one more option you need to turn it on. That's the advanced account forecasting, which is important. Um, so just go here. Okay. Okay, so uh, advanced account forecasting, extend account forecasting capabilities by defining various forecasting criteria such as territories. So uh, enable this one. Oh, come on. Okay, so that's done. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to uh, create, so start creating set to set a forecast for a business unit, you can activate it. Uh, you can deactivate it. Kind of so we'll, we'll look into that in details when we get into it. For now, I just wanted to show you guys certain housekeeping th uh, stuff, right? The things which you should keep into consideration before you start using uh, Net Zero Cloud. Okay, that's great. That's fantastic. So what I'll do, I'll just refresh the screen uh, because I wanted to show you one more option. That is the Net Zero configuration. And the Net Zero configuration will not work unless you turn on the Net Zero um, settings. Uh, and turn on the Net Zero and the Net Zero settings. So what I'll do under quick find, I'll go for net zero. Okay, go for net zero configuration. Okay, so there are a lot of options here, right? So we can see assign carbon footprint, um, auto create uh, carbon footprints. So assign carbon footprint to uh, energy use record. So what does that even mean, right? So as you can see, the name itself suggests, right? It assigns a carbon footprint uh, to energy record based on emission source and data range, right? So if you wanted to <clears throat> do that, this is normally uh, to automate things. If you wanted to turn on the automation, then this is the thing you should be doing. So I do this, I do this. And if you wanted to do auto create, right? So, and yeah. And once you do that, you can do calculate record and calculate different stuff, right? You can you can do all these kind of things, uh, which is pretty uh, simple in my opinion. Um, now, a uh, few things. Uh, again, I wanted to mention that there are certain objects uh, when you get it, uh, you know, not as a trial org, like for instance your stationary asset object. Um, and then you have your vehicle uh, asset. So you might want to have a record type in place. Obviously, it's a common Salesforce practice, right? So um, so if I go to Object Manager and I go to Stationary, just to give you an example, Stationary Asset Environmental Source, which tells you what kind of uh, asset is. it is a commercial building or a data center. So sometimes what happens is that you won't have any record type, right? So if you wanted to segregate it based on asset like commercial building, data center, or whatever, you need to create a record type. In this case, uh, you've been given a record type, so which is great. Uh, now, to if it's still confusing, let me give you an example of the vehicle. So the vehicle could be, you know, could be car or could be, you know, airplane. So whatever, right? So. 
So if I go here, uh, so so depending upon your business requirement and uh, the things which you like to capture, all right, okay, Waco Energy Source. For some reason, it's a bit slow, but that's okay. Um, if I go to record types here, so you got, yeah, I think, okay, so there are fleet vehicle and private jet, right? You can, you can add by the type, and if you wanted to add by the type, um, you can, um, you can do that. I mean, I mean, like I said, right, I mean, you, maybe you won't be seeing any record type and you get it for the first time. Like I said, I'm using a trial org. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm seeing uh, record types. But in general, you may or may not be seeing these two types. But, I mean, like I said, you can create it. Right. So these things I can do very well. And there's something I wanted to talk about. That's the last thing I wanted to talk about. We're going to look at the loading the, the, the data set in, in next episode, right? Um, so um, remember that uh, the, uh, the option I enabled where it's the net zero uh, configuration, which is used to turn on the automation. And there is, uh, so let me show you this one. So under net zero configuration, right? If you look, scroll down, you can see uh, data processing engine definition. So you have all these things, right? So now you must be wondering from where I'm getting this information, right? So this usually comes from a data processing option. So if you go to data processing, um, so these are out of box data processing. So it comes in the data processing engine. So you have a few of them, right? You can create, uh, sorry, not, uh, Yep, this other one, auto processing. So uh, you can create your own new uh, if you would like. If not, you know, just don't bother with it. Um, so um, you can, like I said, right? Um, you can uh, create. Say, okay, let me do this one for you. Anyways, uh, demo data processing. Okay, process stop standard. Or reference to get net zero. So you can actually use the data source. So you can use um, this is uh, just beyond today's episode, but uh, you can choose the data node. Right now, I don't have one. Uh, I can say test. I mean, it makes no sense, but I just wanted to show you how the interface looks like. Okay, you can do. You can select the data set if I have any. Okay, so let's say I have a data set. Mm, which one shall I select? Uh, what plan? I don't know which one should I select. Okay, data. I don't know which one. Okay, I'll just choose the account, right? Okay, done. Select fields. Which fields should I select? There's a name. Uh, I don't know what is it. <laughs> Something. Um, Something has gone wrong, which is, okay, <laughs> let me uh, choose the other one, right? Okay. Uh, there you go. There's a bug in the system, Salesforce. Um, I haven't even started. Uh, I started, you know, breaking things. Okay, let's look at the scope three carbon footprint, right? Okay, let's see if I can select it. Oh, yeah, I can select all the fields I want. Yeah, you do done. Yeah, all right. Make sure data. Okay, I'll save it. All right, that's done. And I will do activate it. Right back. Okay, so basically it means that I need this object. You know it. Uh, right back object <clears throat> and the name. Sorry, right back. You must be thinking it's pretty confusing, right? Uh, I'm just showing you the information right now, just to show you how you can link uh, this custom created data processing to that automation, right? We're gonna look into that in details, right? Don't worry about it. <clears throat> so you're gonna search for the node <clears throat> and action insert target object database. Okay, I said contact. Okay, I just choose account. All right, 
it doesn't matter just do, uh no so source node animal infantry source node field okay, maybe this should be fine uh, okay save activate all right okay. oh sorry I mapped the same thing okay so account okay so I'll just my mark it as an external ID here and just say contact ID okay create a by ID just put it there <clears throat> which API name is taken I don't know what it's talking about right back one two three four one okay maybe this one it doesn't make it easy for you right <laughs> but that's all right I mean this is how you're gonna do it <laughs> when you're gonna start for the first time right you'll say what the heck it is right and now you must be wondering what is this right back objects what is this filters right uh, I will look at it all of it for you right I will teach you guys but just for today we're just walking around we're just showing you an option right so my main intention is to show you how we can do the data processing engine so I created one so I've got the data set obviously you have to data processing ring it's like a batch process you know simple term and it will do all the stuff for you right it's it's mostly used for automation so to use something for automation you need to have some data nodes right so that exactly what we're doing right now okay I think I let me see what happened. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just go back here and net zero. See the demo data processing? What I did? So it's there, right? So you can choose it, and um, it will do the uh, data processing for building energy intensity calculation. So it will point to that. It will get the data set and do whatever necessary step it should do. It's a part of automation, right? So like I said, I will cover in details. So don't worry about it. It's just an uh, introduction just to keep you guys excited about the things that's coming. This is just the housekeeping stuff. There are a lot to cover. So, and it's exciting technology, right? So, so yep. Yeah. And in the next episode, we're going to look at the, the reference data, how to load a reference data and other stuff, right? So if I go here and so you have all this stuff, right? So I'm going to talk about this in the next episode. So things are getting excited, exciting. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to cover. I hope you guys have an amazing um, Wednesday. Adios.